Hey everyone, it's Alexander, the real Mr. Robinson. Welcome to the channel. This is my review for The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad, which came out in 1949 and is the sixth and final film in Disney's package film era. This movie is more in line with Fun and Fancy Free, where it only consists of two stories, except this is more simple and straight to the point. The bridge that ties these two stories together is just going through a library of books. And the two stories that this movie decides to adapt are The Wind in the Willows, which I have seen many, many, many times as a kid, and I've even read the original book. And then the second segment is The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, which I've seen clips of, but I've never seen the whole thing in its entirety. So when I said last week that I have seen half of this movie many, many times as a kid, the first half was what I was referring to. And much like with Fun and Fancy Free as well, both shorts are accompanied by a narrator. Wind in the Willows is narrated by Basil Rathbone because, you know, you have a British story, you gotta have a British narrator. And then on the other side, you have The Legend of Sleepy Hollow narrated by Bing Crosby because, you know, American story, American narrator. So I'm going to start with The Wind in the Willows because this is a segment that, like I said, I have seen many, many, many times as a kid. It's been turned into a Disney attraction at the parks. It's gone from the Magic Kingdom, but it still exists at Disneyland. And it's a weird segment. It is a flat out bizarre story. And uh, that's pretty much in spirit with the book because if you've ever read the original book, this book's pretty nuts as well. I mean, maybe I'm over-exaggerating on how crazy it is, but it's a story about anthropomorphic animals. You have this crazy nut job of a billionaire toad who is obsessed with motor cars. Like, he just finds a new obsession every week, even if it results in possible financial ruin. And what's really weird about this story is that it's a talking animal movie, sure, but the animals are like, to scale. There's a segment when we meet Ratty and Mole for the first time, and when Ratty gets some mail, the mailman is to scale. Like, he's a giant mailman. So in that sequence, you're like, a mailman just went out of his way to give a tiny letter to a rat, and nobody has a problem with that. I just found it weird, but again, that's the nature of the story. So if you're really hung up on that aspect of the story and you can't get past it, then that's really your own problem. But I think the weird factor really plays into the charm of this story. And uh, you have some great characters. Mr. Toad is just a lot of fun. Ratty and Mole are fun as well. Badger is kind of there. He's not boring, he's not uninteresting at all, but he's just kind of the voice of authority and doesn't really have a whole lot to do outside of complain about what Toad is doing and how he's just screwing up his finances. And the narration by Basil Rathbone never feels like it's out of place. It's more in tune with how Dinah Shore narrated uh, Bongo, except there's no singing involved. And also with his narration and Bean Crosby's narration for Legend of Sleepy Hollow, there's never a point where they just stop the movie dead in their tracks to cut to live action segments that are just completely unfunny and cringeworthy. And maybe nostalgia does play a factor into why I love the Wind in the Willow segment so much, but this was actually the first time I rewatched this segment in about 20 plus years. Holy crap. It still holds up, and the comedy is actually more admirable as an adult than it is as a kid. I can just appreciate the slapstick humor, I appreciate the silly situations these characters get into, and also I think this might be the first appearance of the Weasel characters. It's actually been a while since I've read the book, so I'm not entirely sure if the Weasels were in the original book, but I do know the Weasels would eventually make a comeback in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and uh, that's, they're a lot of fun there. In this movie, they don't do a whole lot, and they're just kind of together, they're not individualized as characters, but still, um, this is a fun short, really fun. And in terms of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, it's, um, this is the first time I've seen it from beginning to end. And it's got some really good segments as well. Bing Crosby's narration is 
very fitting for it. Uh, and I find it interesting that there's hardly any dialogue from the characters. Uh, in Wind in the Willows, all the characters were fleshed out uh, and actually had voices to go with them. In this, most of the voices are just singing, or Bing Crosby is just narrating the thoughts of Ichabod Crane. And unfortunately, with The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, I didn't think the pacing worked as well for this short as it did in Wind in the Willows. I wasn't hating it at all, but I just wasn't having as much fun with it as I was Wind in the Willows. That is, of course, until we get to the Headless Horseman. And what's really funny is that most of the movie is just kind of generic Disney. There's nothing really supernatural at all that happens. There's no real foreshadowing to the Headless Horseman. But once we get to the transitional point and the movie starts feeling a lot more creepy and atmospheric, the buildup is pretty intense, and when that Headless Horseman appears and he is chasing Ichabod Crane, it's intense. Like, for kids, it's scary, but even if you're not a kid, this chase sequence is very well animated, it's very exciting, and it can actually be funny here and there. I mean, you've got a Headless Horseman chasing this weird-looking stick-like character, and uh, they managed to get a lot of humor out of it, but never to a point where it steps over the horrifying elements. I don't know if many adults watching this for the first time will be scared, but I imagine if you saw this as a kid for the first time, you would have been scared to death of that Headless Horseman. So to wrap things up, if there was only one movie in Disney's package film era that you could ever watch, I recommend this because it has the better segments. It's very well paced overall. There's really no padding in terms of live action segments or just really unfunny and uncomfortable moments that stop the movie dead in its tracks. And while Wind in the Willows might be the best segment overall, the Headless Horseman sequence in The Legend of Sleepy Hollow makes up for any other problems I might have with that second segment. So I'd say it's good, but it's not great. It is funny, it's very charming, it's not perfect in terms of the movies in Disney's animated canon, but considering how rough it was to go through the entire package film era, I'm glad that they saved the best for last. And there you go, that's my review for The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. Now, like I said before, this marks the end of the Disney package film era, which is their second era of animation. Next week, we're gonna go back to what made Disney popular in the first place in terms of their features and talk about the first movie in Disney's Silver Age, Cinderella which is another movie that I haven't seen in more than a decade. I own it on Blu-ray, but I've just never really re-watched it recently. So it's going to be interesting to see how this one holds up. But first, I want to know what you guys think of The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. If you've seen it, what did you think? Which of these two segments is your favorite? Whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, this is The Real Mr. Robinson telling you there is only one. Hello everyone, I just wanted to say thank you all for watching my review for The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and be sure to follow me on social media, whether that be Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, go check out my Twitch channel, and support me on Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video, but until then, have a good day, and take care of yourselves.